Hello, friends, and welcome to the 17th episode of the Squad Pod, where we love to talk about all our favorite battle royales and multiplayer games. I'm Maddox Jr., and hot dropping into this week's podcast, we have... He's been to hell and back. He loves slaying it out in Doom Eternal. Mr. Washburn, how's it going? It's good, man. Yeah, I played about two more hours of Doom Eternal today on Game Pass. Haven't played it yet. Glad I didn't buy it. Uh, but I, I, you know, I am loving it. Um, because you know, I got it for free, so it's a lot of fun. Yeah, having a good time with there. Nice. He is the ace X wing fire pilot extraordinaire, Kevin Ace X. How's it going? Oh man, you know, I, I don't think I'm an ace pilot after playing Squadron two days ago, ace but wing. I think I'm good enough. <laughs> Well, you can just be Kevin Ace 10 then instead. I'll be fine with you that. Know? I'll be fine with that. <laughs> instead of the Ace X. I'm good with that one. I like that one. <laughs> and finally, joining us live from Carson City, eating some in and out in his car, going to GameStop, stopping at Spirit Halloween, we have Snow Mike Mike. How's it going, Snow Mike Mike? Yo, what's going on, Squad Pod Gang and everybody listening out there? I'm currently inside of Spirit Halloween. <laughs> And they are selling Washburn's outfit that he wears in the war zone. I might buy the gold jacket and the track pants right now. Oh, yeah. Do it, dude. Do the pants gold. It's all gold, bro. It's all gold. What's the name of it? Do you have a name for war it? Warzone Killer is what it's called. Wow. <laughs> really? No way. War really? Zone. That's hilarious. That makes sense for marketing purposes so that they would do that. But, like, that character that everyone else, it's just... It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny, though. They just had some spare track pants and some spare gold jackets, and they were like, you know what we could do with this? <laughs> yeah, like the Warzone. Let's do it. Sell it to some 10-year-olds that are hyped on Warzone, cracked <laughs> out of their minds. Be Speaking so- of Warzone, we will get to that later. We are going to talk a little bit about Season 6 and about our impressions of Star Wars Squad Padrons. But first, we're just going to talk about some games that we played, including... Super Mario 35. Kevin, you got your first win in Super Mario 35. How are you liking the game so far? Dude, that game, pretty tough. <laughs> it's not... Yeah, it is. I don't know. I don't know if it's as bad as... And I'm not saying the game's bad. Or, or just, uh, Tetris 99, I don't know if it's tougher to play that one or this one. Yeah. I think I have more fun with this one, though, with Super Mario 35. At least with this one, I know what I'm doing and what I'm playing. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, it's fun. I like it. Yeah, and I got my first win. The nice. the wins take a long time to get sometimes because they can be going, like, one-on-one with trying to get first with some other guy, and they could take up to, like, I don't know, five, ten minutes if they're really good, if you're both really good. So it takes a while for someone to, to go out. <laughs> yeah, I'm liking it. It's fun. For sure. A lot of cool features. Get a randomizer type of item roulette thing when you get 20 coins. You had X and it gives you a random item. Like it gives you a power block, a star, a fire flower, uh, and a mushroom. I think that's, that's all they give you. Fire flower does seem to be the meta at the moment. Yeah, because that you, you can pretty much take out anyone with it. So it makes yeah. sense that one. <laughs> you, can, you can just use and dominate every level we're in uh, i played a little bit of it myself in handheld mode and i switched the controls from the garbage d-pad on the the joy con to the stick because i was like this is not gonna this is not gonna work for me oh no. so you're playing on the joy con <laughs> i've been playing on the pro controller pro control. yeah the way to go at least for me that's what i like better yeah i don't have a pro controller so there's that. We gotta get one, dude. It's so nice, dude. I know. I know it's so nice, but like at the same time, I mostly play my contr- I mostly play my Switch in handheld mode, I feel like. So there's that. But uh I I thought it was pretty good. I'm not very good at Mario in the first place, so I'm not going to succeed in this game. <laughs> um especially those old school Marios. Yeah. If this was Super Mario World Dude <sighs> thirty five, I would be good at it. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping they'll bring in those Mario games before they take it down. 
That's another That'll sucky thing. Cool. God, they're gonna take it down, man. Yeah, that's Gosh, a bummer. I should stay off ever. Yeah, but if they bring in like, I don't know, Mario Two, and then maybe later on Mario Three, and then Super Mario World, that'd be awesome. I would love that so much. It also appears to me that for the most part, you're just like rotating between a couple of levels. Is that correct? I don't really get. I don't. Or I... are people just like using the shortcuts inside the game to like go back to the first level over and over again? They might be doing that, yeah, but I don't know how the level rotates. Like once you beat the level, sometimes it'll put you like after the first level. It, uh, sometimes I would get like up, get put into like Bowser's castle right away. So. Mm. I don't oh, know. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know how that works. And you get to choose a level at the beginning, but I don't. I don't know what that means, too. I don't know if that's you choosing for yourself, or are you choosing for the opponent you're facing? And then when they finish the level, they they go to the level you choose. So I'm not 100 percent sure yet. Hmm. There's no. Yeah, I, I feel like it would be so. nice if there was just like it was just like. Hey, here's the first one, the second, and it just like went in constant order, and you couldn't like shortcut back to like the first level again. Yeah, just for like a different challenge. Yeah. So yeah, I I, I still don't understand exactly what's going on in the game too. <laughs> Even though I've been playing it for like the the game timer thing said like ten hours so far. Mm. But yeah, I don't, I, I, still, I don't I don't understand what's going on yet. <laughs> for sure. Washburn, how's your experience with Mario 35 been so far? Uh, probably played about three rounds just before we started recording, and it's fine. I, I'm not going to play it again. I don't think it's whatever. I, I don't really care for Super Mario Bros., the original, you know, just mm-hmm. the, the movie. Yeah, that's fair. And all of that, it, it feels slow. It feels like I'm sliding all over the place. I don't have a lot of control. And I know, you know, the more I play it, the better I'd get, but it's just like, whatever. You know what I mean? There's, for me personally, there's so many other games that I would rather be playing right now. Um, so, I, yeah, it's fine. I, I think the Fire Flower is like supremely overpowered. Like, I don't know why you would do anything else other than, because from what I see, you can spend coins on an upgrade to go into a match with. Mm hmm. And you can just go into a match with a fire flower. And I was just asking Kevin before we started, well, why wouldn't I just like sit in one space and progress very slowly and just kind of sit at the back of the screen and keep shooting off fireballs and never die. And as I kill off enemies, I'm getting more and more time because each enemy you kill gives you more time. So that, and I know Kevin, Kevin said like, if you get to Bowser's castle and you take out Bowser, you can throw Bowser at somebody. Um, so that like I get that, but like for me, it's just like I feel like slow playing it and sitting at the back of the screen and and shooting out fireballs is a viable strategy. So the way there's different ways you get time because you, when you get kills, you get more time added to your little time limit. If you throw if you throw fireballs and kill an enemy, you only get plus one. Mm-hmm. If you stomp on them, you get plus two. And I think if you get the star, I think it's also plus two or three i don't remember one of them gives you a, a good amount oh when you, if you use the shell from the uh chur- the koopas if you use a shell to kill enemies it like it kind of stacks so like first enemy you kill it's plus two and then the next one with the shell it's plus three so in a row you can get a lot so that's what you would like want to kind of progress more further in to get that type of like kill kind of like streak in a way <laughs> Because I don't think I don't know if you can survive off of off of getting only like plus ones. Maybe mm. I don't know. I think you might be able, to, but at that point, I mean, <laughs> it, I guess is it really fun to do just doing that? <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I like going through the levels because I like my other strategy is like what you said too. Like go to the Bowser's castle and throw Bowser at them. But I like I want to go into other levels and throw the, uh, other enemies like the the fish, chips, squids, chips, yeah, squids. Uh, the Koopa people who throw on their clouds, who throw the shells, spiky shells. I want to yeah, get to those. those. Yeah. yeah, I want to go to those levels because I know those are, those guys are are a pain to kill because they're up flying around. So that if you can get to that level and kill those guys, that's re- that's really gonna help you out. So that's why I feel like I want to progress to the level just to get to those levels. Then again, I don't know how the levels work. I don't know how you get to those. So that's another confusing part. 
It would also be cool if they just like added a mode where it was like, hey, here's 35 people. See how fast you can beat this world. And whoever does it the fastest wins. There's like something like that. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of different variations that this could provide to be interesting. Yeah. But for now, it's just outlast people on all the levels. Which has been working fine, which I've been liking so far. Yeah. Not bad. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. They they like developed a good idea. They took down the you know one that was a browser game for a reason, I guess, to make their own. But that browser game was much more better than this one, though, in my opinion. Was it? <laughs> yeah, I liked that one more. Mm. Now they switched it to like all like not stuff, not copyright stuff, and it's still the same, I guess. But yeah, but it just doesn't have the same like cool touch to it. We're having the Mario yeah. aesthetics on there <laughs> for sure. All right, and also this week, Washburn has been playing two games, Doom Eternal and Mafia Definitive Edition. How have those been going for you there, Washburn? Uh, so as far as Doom is, I'm prob- I've am i played for about probably four and a half hours total now, and that game is really hard. Uh, I'm playing on normal mode, and I feel like it's a constant challenge. Not like... I'm dying a whole lot. I am dying, but I I am progressing. So like I'm not frustrated with it quite yet. Um but really what that game shows me and excites me about looking at the future is how important frame rate is in a first person shooter. Um Doom Eternal runs at a locked in 60 on an Xbox One X and while the visuals aren't going to wow you, like you're you're not going into a game that looks like God of War or Horizon or, you know, those bigger AAA single player experiences, um, that frame rate and the way that the game moves and, and is just always locked in at 60 FPS is awesome. And it makes it even better than it probably is. Um, the game itself, uh, like I said, it's challenging, but it's fun. And the, what I love about this one is like if you're if you're not constantly moving and using everything in your arsenal against specific types of enemies, then you're you're going to struggle. So like there will be guys, for instance, that come out with like plasma shields. And if you don't switch to your plasma blaster to, you know, counter that, you're going to be in trouble if you don't uh, throw a sticky bomb on like the turret gun on these these specific demons, uh, they're going to last a lot longer than you want them to things like that and so like specific weapons work better against specific enemy types and i'm really enjoying that because it does force you to sort of not stick to one weapon and um really really play around with your arsenal and stuff like that as well so really fun uh glad it's on game pass i was thinking about buying this one uh when it came out but it came out the same time as animal crossing and i'm you know i was gonna get animal crossing uh so I'm, yeah, I'm, they shared a release date. Same release everyone date. Everyone made yeah. cute uh, crossover art. <laughs> yeah, so I'm really enjoying it though. Like it's, I'm so glad it's on Game Pass to give people like me a chance to really experience it because I never played Doom 2016. I always looked at it and I was like, wow, that looks really fun, really cool. And now here's Doom Eternal on Game Pass, and and so to get the chance to jump in there essentially for free. I know it's not really free, but essentially for free. Um, it's really cool. I'm excited for all the other Bethesda games to make their way over there and, and try some of the ones I never really got into because just either time or I just didn't want to drop sixty dollars on it when it released. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I feel Doom like Eternal's with great. like with like Doom and Wolfenstein, I was always like a little bit wary of like, oh, I do want to play these games, but then I feel like oh, now this game is in my like rotation of like mm-hmm. games that when they have a new release, I'll want to play them. I like only have so much bandwidth. Right. Yeah. There's but a, yeah, I have added Wolfenstein. No, I, I haven't added Doom in mm-hmm. yet. I definitely understand what you're saying with there because it's just like this year has been crazy for games. Yeah. Like there aren't like a whole lot of tens. Like it's it's not 2017 or 2018 where we're just you're just getting bombarded, you know, mm-hmm. with with like must play titles. But there have been just an obscene amount of like eights and nines that are just like, oh, I want to play that. Oh, I want to play that. I want to try that. I want to try that. And there you can't. You know what I mean? I mean, me personally, I can't because yeah. I just there's not enough, not enough time hours in the yeah. day. Um, 
so yeah doom fault sort of falls into that category where it's like oh that looks really fun i want to try that but if, you know I'm, am i going to spend 60 dollars on this and 60 dollars on animal crossing and continue to play warzone and rotate between those three games all at once like it's just not going to happen so now that it's on game pass and we are sort of in this holdover period before next gen comes out and before november hits us with like three really big titles um it's a good time for sure uh, so and and mafia is the other one i've been playing that game is shockingly good uh, um i don't know if any of y'all played the original in back in 2002 it's very old um, i did not but the thing that i don't think a lot of people understand about mafia is that without mafia there you, you we never get red dead like like mafia was the first open world game where it puts you into the shoes of a character that is not a good person you're like it is extremely hard to root for any of these characters because they're despicable they're doing despicable things they're saying terrible things um and they're just not good people so without mafia i don't think we ever get red dead and without the success of mafia i don't think rockstar ever says hey let's make a game where you're kind of just a, a asshole you, you know what i mean it, it's not easy to root for john marston a lot of the time especially and even in red dead 2 especially they take that a step further yeah it's um, definitely a lot worse in red dead 2 i would say yeah so but like mafia's definitive edition specifically total overhaul um pretty much the same story brand new voice acting tons of brand new dialogue they add so much to every side character and and really flesh those out and make the world feel realer or more you know more grounded i guess more realistic and these characters are actually sort of just people and not just people that are riding along with you on missions or, or there for comic relief um specifically they add a bunch to your your main character is tommy angelo right uh, I don't know the. I think Andrew Bijorno. I don't know how to <laughs> pronounce. Bijorno. Bijorno. Bijorino. Bijorno. I don't know how to pronounce the dude's last is name. It, uh, a great is it job. set in New York? No. So it's a fictional oh, okay. city called Lost Haven, and it's based on Chicago. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, which is cool because like, it's in Prohibition era in the mm -hmm. '30s, and so a lot of the game ha deals with like what what these criminals and what these organized crime outfits are, are doing to sort of get around that and and make money which was sell illegal booze right um and so sort of going through that and and seeing that is really cool and, and i just did a mission where you go and you like smuggle in some like canadian whiskey and I thought that was really cool because that's how it was you know and the the myths were like back in the prohibition era uh, in Chicago, Seagrams and the boys would drive up to Canada when the lake froze over. They'd drive across Lake Michigan, get some booze, and bring it back. Like that's that was that's the rumors, right? That's the myth. And so, like being able to sort of live out that fantasy is pretty fun, right? Uh, but that doesn't take away from the fact that Tommy Angelo and the boys are just awful people um, through and through. It is a fun story total graphical overhaul brand new voiceovers they've changed the layout of lost haven a little bit um but what really shines in this game is the score and the soundtrack which is just absurdly good uh, i don't think anything's come close this year maybe final fantasy 7 remake could give it a run for its money in terms of score and soundtrack but man when you jump into a car and that like you know 30s jazz starts playing it's just something else man it, it really does uh make it era appropriate and make you feel like you are sort of in that time period and it's a i'm really really enjoying it and having a lot of fun with it and i, I will see it through i'm probably about 60 percent away through it um and it is like doom uh sort of that perfect title right now in this like one month holdover period to keep me oh, busy and, and occupied until november so yeah doom mafia both really fun games i'd recommend checking out dooms on game pass mafia definitive edition i think you can buy it by itself um for less than 60 or you can just get the mafia trilogy for 60 which comes with the definitive edition so i would 
I mean, if you're interested in the Mafia games, I'd do that. And if if I do beat this one in time, I, I kind of want to go check out Mafia 3 because I never played that one either. So, yeah, a lot of games in, in Mafia and Doom are... I'm having a lot of fun with those right now. Mafia has, like, three different settings and three different main characters, right, for each game? Mm-hmm. Nice. And it's now, like, all connected, right? It's all separate mm-hmm. stories. Yeah. Yeah, all, all three of them are, are different. People will tell you two is the best. I like one, um, and I've never played three, so I we'll see if I if I get around to that before you know, before or if my next gen consoles come in and I'm occupied <laughs> with other things. I, Kevin, Washburn, and I have all played a little bit of Genshin Impact. What have you been thinking of it so far, Kevin? Genshin Impact, man, dude. What do they call it? Uh, Breath of the Waifu. Breath of the Waifu, yeah. <laughs> man, that game. It's oh man, I would I want to play more, but I also wanted to play more just to get to the multiplayer and see what that's about. But the thing with that is, you have to be like, what is that rank adventurer sixteen? Mm-hmm. Yep. And I, it's gonna take a long time apparently to get to that or. It, who was it? Flirtable said it'll take a few hours, which I don't think it's true. I don't. I know. think the internet said it would take a few hours, and okay. he got to rank sixteen, but it took him a lot longer than a few hours. Yeah. So. I so I played it for about an hour the other day, and probably about an hour uh, the other day before that, and I'm adventure rank seven. But it did just stonewall me and put me in a place where it's like, hey, no more main story missions till you increase your adventure rank by going and doing these stupid things that aren't a lot of fun. So mm. I think that's oh, why it might take a while too. But uh, yeah, it's fun. I like it. I like the setting. I like the vibe of it. I want to know what's going on. It's free, which I'm surprised by. But I guess the microtransaction thing that they have for the game is buying packs and seeing what character you get so they can roll in your squad which i don't really mind too much but i think you I can i thought it was also like missions no is it mission suit i don't know i didn't i haven't gone too far into it to see what it is hope mm-hmm. it's not but we'll see i mean i wouldn't mind paying a little bit here and there because it's a free game so as long yeah, as i don't true. go over like over like a 60 dollar like pat or money spent on the game i think that it would be good but i will see but yeah, I don't mind too much of the micro tonight. And the game... They're not can... exactly a super obvious in my experience so far. Uh, They're not like pushed into your face too hard right now. No. I, the only time it pushed into your face was just... It was showing you what it was and it gave you like free yeah. token to roll. You got a character and that was about it. But yeah, it's it's not like all in your, all in your face with it, but it's fine. And uh... What was I going to say? Uh, free, it's fun. Oh, you can play anywhere. Uh, anywhere besides Xbox. It's on PS4, PC. It's on mobile, which I'm surprised by. I downloaded mm. it. Still haven't launched it. I want to see what, what that's about. I think you have cross-save with that with PC. But no cross-save mm-hmm. progression with PS4. Mm-hmm. That's the PS4 way. Yeah. I remember when, when, remember when like, Fortnite you know, really opened all that up and yeah, and the people with their Sony accounts couldn't do anything. Yeah, which is the same it's the same that. thing with Realm Royale too. Realm Royale mm-hmm. is the same way. So. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I don't know why they 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 do that. It's it doesn't make any sense. But yeah, it it is what PlayStation does. So I don't really don't mind. I don't play it on there. I have it downloaded, but I don't think I'll play it on there since I found out about that. You know, I started playing on PC. Yeah, it's I'm liking it so far. What do you guys think? I could take it or leave it, honestly. But for me, what sticks out about this game is that it is borderline litigious with how much it rips off Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I mean, it is blatant. You, the way that you move, swimming, climbing, your stamina bar, the way that you can use elements to do different things and affect the world in specific ways. It is just a like a blatant ripoff. And I'm sitting here surprised Nintendo's not looking at this saying, what the hell is going on here? You know what I mean? Um, That's really what sticks out about it to me the most. The characters I don't care about at all. I'm I'm skipping every piece of dialogue I can to just try and progress. 
And like I said, it hit, it put me in a place where it was like, Hey, your adventure ranks seven now to get to the next piece of story content and to continue to grind that adventure rank, go level up a little bit and do these side things. Uh, so that was frustrating. I hate it when games do that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, visually it's, it's pretty, it looks like breath of the wild. Um, Gameplay wise, it's fun enough. It's your it, there's not much remarkable about it. It's a hack and slash with, like I said, some elements that you can use to affect the world in specific ways. Like every character has a different element. You have a light. So far for me, um, I've got a lightning dude, a frost dude, uh, a fire girl, and my guy who's wind. And say like you come up against a bunch of guys that are standing in water, you can switch to the lightning girl and she'll shock the water. They'll all be electrocuted. If they're carrying a shield, switch to the fire girl. She'll shoot a fire arrow at them. It'll burn their shield. If you shoot fire in the grass, it starts to burn the grass around you. You get a little updraft. You can whip out your glider, just like Breath of the Wild, you know, fly up in the air. Yep. Um, But I mean, it is for me it's frustrating that they lock the multiplayer so deep into the experience because I don't want to play by myself in this one. I, I just don't um I don't know if I will get there, to be honest with you. I'd like I said, I'd rather be playing Doom or Mafia right now and, and not trying to grind this game that I'm not all that interested in, so It's fine. It's not bad. And I don't know what the microtransactions are like. I've heard people call it a gotcha game. Uh, Whatever that means, I'm I'm guessing that means that there are some pretty slimy microtransaction mechanics the later you get in terms of, you know, equipment and roles. So I don't I'm I'm not the really person to sit here and talk about this because I don't know much about it because I'm not that deep into it. And I don't know if I ever get that deep into it. Yeah. I feel like I'm kind of on the same page with both of you. If it was, if the multiplayer was unlocked after like level three or four, I would be playing it with you guys and it would be a good time. Uh, it's kind of mindless. You can just wander around, slash things, shoot arrows, that stuff. Um, it is pretty and for free. I was shocked that it was free to be quite honest. Yeah. Um, that type of game. <laughs> Look at it, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's strange. Um, but, uh yeah, I, I had like a decent amount of fun with it. If I had friends with me, I would play it more. And honestly, the chance of us getting to 16 with the amount of other games that I would rather like be progressing through at this point is uh like yeah. I mean, I'd even yeah. There's just like so many games plus mm-hmm. other games that are old that I keep on going back to randomly. <laughs> so, there's that. Yeah. It, uh, like then, you said like Matt, I, yeah. it fits into that category of just like Oh, I could play this. You know, I'm interested enough to try it, but there's there's not enough time. There's yeah, not no. enough time. And as soon as November hits, and I'm playing Cyberpunk and Call of Duty Cold War and whatever the hell else, it's just there's just not gonna be any time to play that game at all. Mm. Being honestly, sadly, I but, can't wait for Cold War. <laughs> dude, Cold War is gonna be great. Um, I don't know how the multiplayer is gonna be, but I'm excited for this campaign yeah. situation going on. Then the last random game that we want to talk about, um, someone in this group, not pointing any fingers, uh, is very scared and wouldn't even participate. And someone else in this group is very scared and just screamed and alt tabbed out of the game and was at his Microsoft sign in page. True. Well, that happened. Asmophobia is a terrifying, terrifying experience. Kevin. <laughs> Man. We both got murdered by the spooky ghosts, and it that, was not a good time. That that game, oh man, it was fun because we were just screwing around at first. Because the game isn't really good. I I don't know. It explains what to do, but I mean, they don't give you the items to do it with. They're like I don't get how you're supposed to play this game if you don't have no money and get the items that you need. So that's. That's a weird part of that game. I, I guess agree. You, I guess you just do some objectives and you just leave to gather money, but I don't know. It felt odd about that. But yeah, it it's all I don't know. Matter. Do you think it's kind of hard to get the ghost or do something? Because at first we didn't get what we were supposed to do. 
Um, we're kind of well, confused the, about it. The annoying thing to me was that it would be like, get a picture of the ghost. And I was like, okay. But then it only lets you take like four photos with the camera. Yeah. And then you have to like reload into the level to take another photo. It, like, I feel, I feel like there's no be way. Like a delete button. Like a deleted picture. Yeah. I don't or know. Or just like just have unlimited photos until we are able to snag one that's the correct one. Yeah. It's just like, I don't know. It's weird. That part felt, was definitely weird. Did you also feel confused, Mike, when we were playing that? Yeah, uh, I'll stick with the photo one. I, I agree with Maddox, right? I would have really preferred the digital camera just to let me shoot off as many as I could. But I also did like the idea of like, hey, this is one of the scariest moments you're going to experience and you only get five chances. So don't miss. And I remember taking photos of your shoes, Kevin, the bottom of a staircase on one of them, the ceiling, because it's, it's so like dark. everybody's screaming and it's so dark and it's fun that like I'm panicking because I know I only get five shots on this camera and sure as shit, two of them of your shoelaces, Kevin, you know, it's so much fun. I, I like it, but I think it goes to like, Hey, when you go out of the level, you need to buy more supplies. So for us, we should have been like, Hey, we only get five photos on this camera. Let's buy another one, right? That's how I look at it. But I agree. Can you I mean, purchase cameras? Yeah, yeah you can the, purchase everything. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh-huh. It felt oh, okay. weird. Why can't you like? Yeah, uh, why can't you just delete the pictures you took in though? You know, it's just it's a digital yeah. camera. So <laughs> my favorite is looking at the photos you've taken because in our situation, Kevin, you laugh because you know this is where you died in front <laughs> of me, and my photos are just pure mayhem. So when I think about the photos and the moment, I'm like, oh yeah, I wasn't even close to trying to capture that ghost. It was like on me too, and I kept telling you, to take <laughs> I died, dude. Yeah. God, it I also was... does a very unique thing where it uses Windows voice recognition. And so when you say the name of the ghost, you like awaken it and like it gets really angry at you and like locks the door, front door, and like turns off the lights or the lights start, and your light flashlight starts flickering the whole time. And it's like very creepy. And we're yeah. just over here whispering, like, Rose, uh, Rose Dawson, or something, you know. Betty, I don't know, Betty, like B- B- Betty Batson, you know, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, and you're just saying their names over and over again, and the 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 whole place is just locking down, and the lights are all flashing. It's crazy. So, some of the ghosts would would get really more aggressive when you said the names, but like that yeah. kid ghost, that it wasn't really too crazy <laughs> about it. Like, not, it wasn't like the last. The last house we we went into, and that ghost was just. Mm. I think that Very ghost was aggressive. more demonic. The one that killed me. Yeah, that was really active in that house, and that Wait, was like. So you're yeah. you're telling me there's like Discord integration with it, or what? Like, how does no? That you work? have to like click a click a button on your keyboard and it's like talk. In game chat, yeah, yeah, yeah it's like in game chat. chat. Okay, yeah, but uh, the, the to... AI can listen to you, which is the coolest part. It said to just use in game chat, but when we were trying to use it it, it like it wouldn't pick up mike so we just stayed in discord essentially yeah because mike yeah, is recording off for another that. yeah the computer yeah. so he wouldn't pick up anyway uh, so. okay, yeah but then again I, I i've been watching videos and streams of people playing that and in using the in-game chat and the in-game chat uh it's just not that great <laughs> mm-hmm. it sounds we sound better on discord so let's just stay on discord and just use the chat when we need to <laughs> just to call it yeah. yeah. games Cause we got we got we got a lot of events just by doing that anyway, so it's yeah. not like we need to be in the game anyway. I but. think it's a really cool idea. This is a game that I've never kind of seen this idea or concept thought out and actually created into reality like this. Because this is a really cool idea, and whoever made this, they should get some props because it's fun, it's scary, and it's a great experience with your friends. And to be clear for everyone who hasn't played it, it is a ghost hunting game. There, we had four people walking into a house. There's like screens and a truck, and you can see like the ghost activity. And you go into the house and you have like an EM scanner or EMF, EMF scanner, yeah. and you're trying to, and then gotta love that thing temperature gauge. And you're trying to figure <laughs> out which room the ghost is in. And then, once you figure out which room the ghost is in, you're trying to capture it on video or a picture of it. And there's like a bunch of different tasks that you can do. And all those tasks are new money. And then when you leave and go to the main menu, you can buy more stuff to capture more photos. I don't know. To, to like just 
I don't know, like prove that ghosts are real, I guess. I don't know. I, I guess another big thing with the game too is when you choose a house or place you want to go to, it doesn't really tell you, it gives you a recommended item to bring. But yeah, when we, yeah, it doesn't tell you like the list what you should bring exactly. Because when we go into the game and we bring the recommended item, we'll see like, oh, you also need this thing on the board. And I'm like, well, you know, we didn't bring that because we didn't think we didn't need it. Like crucifix. I didn't recommend a crucifix for us last time. Oh, so. yeah. That was yeah. weird about it was it was weird. Then again, yeah, I have no idea how you beat this. <laughs> yeah, it, it's also an early access game. So, oh, really? Nice. Yeah. We uh, can just go back to it once every October to scare ourselves to death a little bit. Yeah, but next time Mike said we got to put on the VR headsets. Now we got to use a VR set. Yeah, I definitely. Have VR yeah, I have a great question. When we're done with talking about this, like I have the good ending question of like, where do we see ourselves? But like. Right now, when I think about that, man, what a cool freaking game. I love that yeah. each and every ghost is a little bit different. I, I like the experience. Yeah, it was a very unique experience. And like uh, the the sound design for like when you're getting murdered is absolutely terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. Yeah, the sound. Yeah, give, give the sound like, a whole lot it, of love. It feels like something's behind you. And then you're like sitting in your dark room at 10 p.m. at night trying not to freak out and wake up your girlfriend. And it's like a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah what a good time i don't know how much the, the sanity plays into it too like what would happen if oh, our sanity yeah. went all the way down I, I we kept checking on that but i don't get i need to look it up and see the only time that it does. said zero was like after you had died basically Kevin. oh yeah because i guess you know <laughs> that's his heartbeat zero that's what that yeah. is he's flatlining i'm just dead on the floor just in a weird position on the front door <laughs> So to round this conversation out, Mike, what was your final question? So, like, my thing is, is like, this is a really cool and unique game. And whoever listens to the podcast, you know, we're all coming out of this with smiles and a lot of laughter and a lot of good screams and scares. But my question is, is like, and quality, (laughs) very good clips, folks. Just so you know. (laughs) But what I was going to get at is like, when we experience this together, almost similar to Among Us as well, right? Could this game capture you a second time? with that feeling of fear and being terrified or is it a one and done scenario because like we talk about among us and how you kind of play that game for the first time and it's so different it's so new it's so oh there goes mike Robot. Mike, you sound like a robot bro yeah i sound like a robot mike third time all right could get you back so the only reason i think i kind of got I, I think i got the question he's saying the only reason i would want to come back it's just to some scares. The only reason. <laughs> just can you mute? It? Yeah, can't we mute him? Yeah, this is the only reason I would want to come back. It's just to capture the ghost and do one of the things. That's all I wanted to come back for. I don't know. Yeah. Because after, after that, after that, we, we'll, yeah. <clears throat> after that, we'd be technically we'd be kind of good at the game anyways, and I think I feel like we if we capture our first ghost, we know how to play the game, and I, after that, I feel like we can capture another ghost and. and just complete all the tasks after that but my thing is like it's still gonna be scary every time yeah there's no scenario where this gets less scary maybe it gets less fun because you just are tired of being constantly scared but like among us like what's fresh and new and we got used to it and everyone was very aggressive at the beginning and like had like the energy level very up and then like once you get to the fourth or fifth time that you're playing the game it's kind of cooled down and everyone's like a lot more level-headed and like no one's like randomly accusing people of anything and it kind of loses its luster that way and i don't think the same thing kind of applies here where uh, every time you go back you're going to be scared you know yeah i guess but like i think what mike was saying too do you think how many times will we come back to this too i mean probably not a lot because yeah. None of us are were like not scared. I feel like <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, everyone said I wasn't, but I, I mean, I was definitely scared. I think we'll come back to it. The only time we'll come back to it, just this, it will be this month. I don't think we'll come back to it like I don't know during Christmas time. You know, <laughs> I just feel I weird feel like, playing this game yeah. <laughs> during the holidays. And then yeah. we're in the mood for it because it's just Halloween, you know, month pretty yeah. much. So we're just doing all these scary games no matter what. So yeah, I would say like if we go back to an, it again and like scare ourselves one more time this month, and then like I could see us coming back like a year from now also. Yeah, next year. Like, oh, it's that time of the year again. Yeah, it's so phasmophobia. Trying to capture some ghosts. This time we'll have, we'll, we'll have a VR headset so we can actually play it like we're in the game. That's terrifying. Because I'm, I'm watching a video right now for it, and someone's using the VR stuff, and it looks it, it looks really more like immersive, and I'm just, I want to try it out. <laughs> It seems like the that potentially would like you put on that VR headset, you'd get scared, you'd start like walking into stuff or like <laughs> you'd like bump into a wall and just scare the crap out of yourself. But, uh, maybe we'll see. Cause I don't know. I need to see how they're playing it. I don't know if they're using the yeah. joystick to move around instead of walking mm -hmm. around. But yeah, what do you think, Watchman? Do you think I would come and play this with us? Never. Come on. Mm -mm. We'll choose we'll an easy one. Not gonna do it. This is not that scary. Uh, I saw the clips, bro. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, I don't want any part of that. I just, <laughs> I don't. It just this is not something I am interested in at all. I just, I just want Mike or Flare Bull to get murdered next time we play it, Kevin. I know, right? I'm surprised because Mike didn't get murdered. It's very uncomfortable, and you, it's not a good experience. <laughs> Man, when I first died. I can mm -hmm. hear the the kid coming from like upstairs, because he was walking slowly down the stairs. I can hear the footsteps stomp, stomp, stomp. I'm like, that's when I was telling Mike, Mike, take the picture, take the picture, hurry, hurry. And I couldn't see mm -hmm. where the stairs were because it was dark. I didn't have the flashlight out because I think I had, I might have had the EMF reader on mm -hmm. me. And then it just got the crap out of me because I, I think it does. Does it? Does she do a noise when she crab, grabs you? Because I don't remember anymore. I think I felt like she does. So and then like that was scary. Yeah. Then you know the arms. Yeah, there was like me. a lot of the noises associated with dying. And yeah, when I died, that were very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, and then the you, like, arms. Literally, I was like looking over my shoulder in real life. I feel like I did. I took off my headset when that happened, <laughs> and it's yeah, I did too. <laughs> it was crazy. And then yeah, yeah. you see the Just arms wrapped around you, and you go to like I don't know down the world or hell, something like that. I don't know what it was. Yeah, it's like a spooky world. It was weird. It felt like I was inside a, like inside of a monster or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you come back as a ghost, and they you just can't do much as a ghost. I, you can spot the the ghost though. Oh really? Yeah, that's that be useful then. But at what cost, Kevin? At yeah, what cost? Because we lose that. You lose my items if you uh, someone they lose their items if you die, so you can't use them again. So it sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, because I, I lost the. Uh, Schmucks, whatever it's called. The sticks. Sticks. The smudge smudge sticks. sticks. Smudge sticks, yeah. Lost those. But yeah, it was fun. We had a fun All right. Time. Now we'll move on to one of our two big things that we wanted to talk about this week. Uh, Star Wars Squadrons. How have we been feeling about the squadrons? Fun. Oh, yeah. You guys go ahead. Kevin. Oh, it's a uh, story mode. I feel like the story mode is going to be more fun than multiplayer. I agree. Because <laughs> the multiplayer, man, you're either good or you're either just going to get wrecked. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It, there's only two game modes, right? Is the dog fight and yep. the other thing. I don't know. Where, what, what what was it, Washburn, that you chose? Uh, Fleet battles. Fleet, yeah. So, like, that's only two and i don't really think <sighs> they're okay i don't know <laughs> they're okay i mean i feel like the death match is about what you would expect from a death match of video of any video game whether it was call of duty or a, a game where you shoot planes out of the sky mm -hmm. um I had, I had fun with the dog fights for a little while i think i would maybe hop in just play like one or two see how it's going my experience when I was playing in the multiplayer dogfights, it was like I would 
be doing really bad and then get like three kills in a row all of a sudden and then go back to doing bad. Um, I, it, it's like, I didn't feel like I was necessarily out playing people and the timing on in terms of trying to like deflect the missiles coming in was pretty difficult. Um, and uh, I, I'm enjoying the single player mode a lot. Uh, it's just like, you don't have to, it's not like you're getting outplayed by these cracked out kids or whatever. Um, it was, I, I had a really good time with the single player so far and I will definitely end up finishing the single player missions. Yeah. Um, I don't know how interesting the story is necessarily, but uh, probably medium to not that interesting, but I'll, I'll still watch and listen and see if anything interesting does happen. Cause there is a character that they've referenced twice from rebels. I don't know if she's going to make a bigger appearance or not. But that would be interesting to me and probably Kevin as well. I assume. Yeah, that's the most interesting part for me too. <laughs> <laughs> like what's and going then, on with this character. Yeah. And then when we played Fleet the the problem with ever well, just like overall, I guess, that I have is with especially with the fleet battles, because you're trying to shoot bigger ships, is you keep on having to like fly past these mostly stationary top objects and try and shoot like one spot and then you have to like turn go around fly away come back and it's just like you flying in a circle or like slowing down all the way and shooting one spot but usually that results in death so you can't really do that um and since it's like exclusive to first person you can't it's like a lot harder to be like oh i'm going to hit this now (laughs) and it's at certain points or like, oh, I should pull up because I'm way too close. It's a little bit harder to tell. Yeah. Um, I mean, overall, I still think it's fun, but shooting like a certain spot on a Death Star is the least fun part of it, I would say, even in the single player missions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm. It's fine. Like, I, I think forty dollars is a great price point for this game. Yeah. Um, I like you guys. I think the single player story is going to be where I get the most enjoyment out of it uh, by far. I think the multiplayer stuff is there's two modes. Like you said, there's dog fight, which is just death match. You fly around whoever kills the other team, the most wins. And then there's fleet battles, which is the tug of war uh, sort of back and forth, push and pull gameplay where you, there are some objectives and, the more objectives you complete, the further you can push along and whoever gets to the other team's side first wins. Um, T- I can take that or leave it on the multiplayer side. So when I came into this game, I was terrified because when I play Star Wars Battlefront 2, there are people who get in the ships, the airships, and destroy. They they can They can come out of games with 150 kills because they're up there in a TIE fighter just destroying everything. And I was like, oh boy, here we go. Those are going to be the people who come over to this game and just destroy. Um, That's not so much the case uh, because everybody is locked in first person and I think that has a lot to do with it. But there are going to be people who are just good at this uh, naturally because they're just, they played Battlefront so much and uh, while the ships do handle differently, you know, that skill set is going to transfer over somewhat. What I like the most about this game is that it's a lot more complex than just pulling the right trigger and, and shooting or pulling the left trigger. And Yeah, I was about to mention that as well. And doing all that. Yeah, you, like you've got those mechanics where like if you press left on the D-pad, you'll prioritize your engine. You go faster, press up, prioritize lasers, shoot stronger or right and prioritize shields. You can even divert your shields from, like, take off your back shields and put them all on the front, or take off the front shields, put them all on the back. Um, you can call it for, in for resupply. There's certain auxiliary abilities that you have, and you can sort of get into those loadouts and customize those pretty deeply. Uh, from where I, you know, from where I sit and where I see it, I think. It's fine. I don't know how much I'm going to play it. I, I like you guys. I will beat the story because it's only eight hours long. I figure I'm about halfway through it. And after that, I'll probably put it down because I, I just don't have the the will to go and get stomped and learn in, in these multiplayer modes. I just don't have it. 
the fleet battles are also insanely long and it takes an insane amount of time to destroy the bigger ships mm -hmm. and you're like oh we've almost destroyed it and then it's like defend your own ships and then the shields go back up and then you have to knock the shields all the way off and then go back to hitting the health off of the death star or the or the battle star, sure, sure. Battle, the star destroyer and it's yeah. just like ugh, it's just demoralizing past a certain mm -hmm. point we lost yeah. to the ai because we were just like over it and <laughs> we keep up. doing the last match <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I think a lot of that has to do with us not understanding the builds and going mm, in with yeah, the probably. right strategies. I think when we do go in and people are stopping all over us, it's because they know how to play the game better. And mm -hmm. they know how to build their ships out and what abilities and presets they need to bring in. Um, but, I mean... I don't know, man. Like, I'm I'm just not going to sit and play this game for hours on end in the multiplayer suite because I'm just not... I don't have that much fun with it. It's just not for me. Yeah. I, I mean, personally, there's definitely not a lot of variety there either. Mm -hmm. And that, what's cool to me about the single player specifically is that for some odd reason, it does scratch the Star Fox itch where... Mm -hmm. you are you're flying and your teammates your squadron will be like okay slow down let's all fly you look out your window you see them all you're flying in formation they're having conversations with each other it's like slippy and peppy you know what i mean having conversations mm -hmm. with each other in star fox and it's yeah. like that's really cool for me it's it, it does sort of scratch that star fox itch and um I do enjoy the single player a lot because there are objectives. And as you fly throughout these levels, those objectives change and you have to do new things. And it, the game does do a pretty good job of explaining to you, um, go here, do this, destroy this, defend this. And I think I'm having a lot more fun in the single player than I am in the multiplayer. So for sure, I, if I was going to recommend buy or wait for sale, I'd say wait for a sale uh, for like, if you're like me, um, I, I wait for a sale and yeah, give the single player a shot. Yeah. Wait. I mean, the whole balancing of shields and guns and all, like all that stuff is very cool to me. And it like mm -hmm. feels like you're like an actual fighter pilot. And I think this game would be absolutely insane in VR. Yes, that's a good point. And I think if I had a VR, I would be a lot higher on this. Yeah, because yeah, I think he, this was meant for VR. It seemed like mm -hmm. it, like just, you can tell. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it's like because like this first per person moments you're like in the like hangar bay or stuff like mm -hmm. that, but you can't move around. He's just like right, yeah, looking around. So yeah, pretty obvious. It's like right? every other VR game where you look and you press a button and your character goes there. Yeah, except you're doing it with a controller. So yeah, the game is obviously built and made for VR. It is cool that they allow you to play it on controller or whatever. Mm. Obviously, they're going to increase sales that way. Um, but yeah, I think if I did have like an Oculus, uh, which I never will because I hate that they're linked to Facebook, uh, Same. I, I would get a lot more out of this, I think. Get the HTC Vive, whatever it's called. The Vive. Mm. That one's uh, Games. Thing, I think that are VR. the Val you're thinking about the valve index no which is like a thousand dollars yeah I think they combined with HTC didn't they did they okay for their VR thing I thought so for some reason I, I always feel that the the HTC uh VR headset is always the best one but even though it's, it's the most expensive one too but mm -hmm. yeah but uh I definitely want to get one but I'm gonna wait until like I don't have to attach myself to a PC and it or Facebook let's be honest yeah <laughs> yeah, um, I, I yeah, it's got to be wireless. But yeah, like you guys said, if if there was the, if I had VR, I would be a lot higher on this because I I remember when I when PSVR came out, my buddy got it, and I went over there and I tried the I think it was Eve some like Eve game on PlayStation where you are flying spaceships in VR and doing oh, the same yeah, yeah. like the same thing you do here. I was like, oh man. That's a lot of fun. Like mm -hmm. it feels so fun to sit in that cockpit and look around and and do all that stuff. But on a controller, it's like you're not gonna get as good of an experience. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say with the multiplayer too. It's 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 hard to make. You know, to go back to the builds, it's hard to make a build because you have to make the build for both sides of the. Mm -hmm. Uh, team or like Imperial and the Rebels, 
even though they're pretty much the same type of ships, you still gotta like work on like the X Wing and the TIE Fighter uh, first uh, ship. Even though if you yeah. look at them, they pretty much have the same type of weapons, except yeah. that they're they're separate, and it's just like. It's a tough, it's a tough time to figure out which one you want to build out more, because then and when you go to the multiplayer, you don't know what side you get to be on, and you'd be like, well, you know, I spent all my token things on the rebel side, so I don't have anything good on the imperial side, so it sucks. Now mm-hmm. I'm gonna be like low, kind of like low level one in a way. Yeah, I, mean, I agree with you there, Kev. I think they should have just made it universal. I, yeah. I think if you apply a, a upgrade to an X-wing starfighter, that should go to your Tie fighter starfighter or whatever you yeah. know the same class of ship across both sides i get that they do it to you know try to make you grind out those medals and i think it's called glory uh you know yeah. stuff like that um but that's for me that's a mistake and what what else is a mistake is the fact that like imperial ships don't have shields so while while you're on a, a x-wing for instance you can press right on the D-pad to maximize the shields. power to your shields. Yeah. Right? That's mm-hmm. not an option in a TIE fighter because TIE fighters don't have shields, whatever. We're in canon, you know. But you know how the Imperi- the uh, Rebel, the X-Wing, you can divert your shields front to back, you know, how depending on what you want to do. If you're in a TIE fighter, if you press the X button, which is what that does in the Rebel side, you what you do is you actually take power away from like whatever the sh- equivalent is with the shields on that side and put it into something else. So like if I were to, instead of diverting my shields front to back, I'm diverting my shields into lasers or speed. And I'm going to take hella damage because I have no protection when I do that. So like the, it's the ships are totally, that, like the ships are totally different. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like the, it's the same class of ships, but what they do on both sides is totally different. And I get that they want to keep it in canon and they want to yeah. make sure the Star Wars people don't come after them. You know, Tie Fighters don't have shields. Whatever. Um, it's a video game. I, I, I honestly, for me, that's that's where I stand on it. They should be the same. They should handle the exact same. They should do the exact same things. I don't care if one's a Tie Fighter and one's an X Wing. Uh, and and like Kevin said, having to upgrade both sides is super frustrating. It's tough, yeah. dude. Because you're like, I don't know what to put it on because I'm like, I don't know what side I'm going to be on when I get into a game. And it's just waste your points on a side you, you didn't get to be. So, <laughs> and it sucks. But uh, Yeah, the final two things I just wanted to say is, thank God there's no microtransactions. The customization options are very cool. Um, and then it'll be interesting to see if they have any like post-launch support or if they add in more multiplayer modes, because that would probably bring me back in for a little while Mm -hmm. to try out a new multiplayer mode. I think they will, and I think they'll also add more ships, because, Mm -hmm. I mean, each side only has, you know, those two, those four ships. You know, you've got your starfighters, like X-Wing bombers, like Y-Wing, a wings and then some weird support ship over on U wings, I guess. Yeah, uh, over on the rebel side, and the imperial side has their equivalent, but they all do different things depending on what side you're on. So, really, what the story mode is is it's real, it's fun, and I, this isn't like a basher to take away from it, but it's an eight hour tutorial because you're gonna yeah. go you're gonna go through these missions. They're gonna put you in different ships and they're going to tell you in every mission, hey, if you press this button while you're in, you know, this ship, it's going to throw a shield at at your buddies who are in the TIE fighter so they get a little tactical shield. It Like, that's your support ability when you're in the support ship. It's like, oh, that's cool. Now I, now I know if I want to go back to multiplayer, I have that option. Kevin, when we were playing um, the push-pull mode, the, the fleet battles, uh-huh. I, I don't know if it was you or Flurple who was telling me, like, the Y-Wings don't actually drop bombs. Well, Flurple, they do. Flurple. They do. Yeah, they do. Um, it's it's the different ability. Like, because I, w- I was just in a campaign mission in a Y-Wing, and f- I f- was flying over this base, and it was like, hey, with this ability, press right bumper, and you'll mm. actually drop the bombs okay. like they would in the nice. movies. Which was, I, I was like, oh, that's really cool. I so, would... like, now now I know when we play 
push pull mode or fleet battles and i have that ability on a y-wing i can fly over those bigger ships the frigates and actually go and do bombing runs which is what is all i wanted to do so, but yeah like now i know that's possible so again not to take away from the story mode because i think the story mode's great but it is it's it's an eight-hour tutorial it's it's going to show you how to what each game. ship does yeah and 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 how to do that so yeah you can take that for what it is i still think it's a ton of fun the the story mode is so mm -hmm. if y'all wanted to go back in and play it i would i just like i think for this one i just kind of got to sit on it like i'm not i'm not like pining to go back mm -hmm. um but the more i sit and don't play it um the more excited i'm gonna be to jump back in i don't know uh, if that yeah makes i think sense yeah i think after i beat the campaign and i like have a full understanding of all the stuff, it will also be good. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say of uh, all the options. Have you guys have you guys played Battlefront Two, the new one? Yeah, uh, yeah. Did, did you guys play the Space Battle Galactic Space? Mm -hmm. What it's called? I think that's a way better multiplayer than how they did it. The thing with their way that they did it, you die pretty easily when you're doing that. It's not like this mm -hmm. one where you can actually kind of survive after being hit so many times and come back. And I felt like if they integrated that, like, because if you play that, they they give you so much to do in that game type. You can like go and help out, like attack the this part of the ship, and uh, or go help and it attack other, like other frigates. Like, it, I don't know. I feel like more there was more to do in into that one. I, I think the fleet battles is that sort of equivalent, but. We just didn't understand it. Yeah, there are certain spots on the like star destroyers and stuff that you're supposed to shoot at specifically. Yeah. But the thing with that was that we kept dying when we get came close to the star destroyers. We die pretty easily. Mm -hmm. But like in Battlefront Two, you can go around and just shoot at it and come back around, and and maybe you see an enemy, go after that enemy, come back and do that. I don't know. It felt more better in Battlefront, in my opinion. But the thing, yeah, the thing is, was you die pretty easily in Battlefront Two. So like I felt like squadrons. When I played that one, I felt like I was doing the fights you would see in the movies, and then Battlefront twos, uh, like ship battles. That I felt like I was like the people in the background in the movies dying so easily and doing right. other things too. So I felt yeah. I felt that way to me playing these two ty t these two games and like comparing those two because. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that Squadrons felt more realistic, uh, like to the movie, than the Battlefront Two. But I, f I felt like Battlefront Two was more fun, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, it's a video game, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. and so, like, the reasoning behind the difference between the Imperials and the Rebel ships just doesn't matter to me. Like, I, I don't care about that at all. And like what Kevin said, in in Battlefront, a Tie Fighter and the X Wing, they do the same things. Like those mm -hmm. those two ships are gonna do the same thing. Same thing with an A wing and a Tie interceptor in Battlefront, do the same exact thing. But where in in Scott and squadrons, it's they're totally different. They have totally different capabilities. So it, it is whatever. And you know, as far as that concern is that the as far as that is concerned. But um, yeah, I'm I'm having fun with the story. That's that's really where I'm at on this. For sure. Um, finally, to just round out our topics for the week, we are going to talk a little bit about Call of Duty Modern Warfare Season 6. The big thing that they added to the map was a subway system that has six <laughs> stops around <laughs> around Verdansk. Um, it's only like the town areas, right? Uh, go, there's there's... one by Stadium. There's one downtown. There is one by Airport. There is... Oh yeah, right. There is one uh, train more station, right? or two more. Uh, one at train station and yeah. one. By the other one. Wheel. That's a, like a weird. Uh oh yeah yeah maybe that's the last one. Yeah. I promenade. Yeah. Um, and they made an interesting decision here. I would say, with the trains and how they work. Uh when you go down there and you get into the train the doors close and it 
teleports you to the next station. And uh, we used it like once just to see how it was. And we we're like, oh, this is kind of weird. And then mm-hmm. I yesterday when I was playing with some friends, I uh, used it to get around once. And it, I mean, it like made it so that we rotated into like two circles in front because we had done a recon. Um, mm. So that was cool. But at the same time, you like come into the you come out of the subway and then the feeling that I felt was just like, I have no idea if anyone's even remotely around this area because mm. I haven't been in this area for a long time. So I think there's that potential where you're a little bit worried. Maybe if you had a UAV and popped it right when you got up to the top, it would give you a good sense of what was going on. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, it's cool, but like not exactly necessary. You can't travel outside the circle when the subway stations are outside the circle. Um, and then the other big things that they added, we can go back to talking about the subway in a second, are, are there's an armored Royale limited time mode that I thought was pretty fun. Mm-hmm. And no then fun. Uh, they've added two new guns as they usually do, which has actually brought me the most enjoyment out of anything from this update, I would say. <laughs> but they're broken. Um, down. That's my thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the sniper rifle is so much fun to use yeah. in regular multiplayer and in the war zone because it's like, uh, you can just crush people with the sniper rifle. It's so cool. You gotta, um, you gotta use it since you're a sniper. It's really good. Yeah, you do have to use it. What's the unlock? Unlock? What's the level on the unlock on that? Uh, it's like 15 on the 15. battle pass. Yeah, mm. not too far. Um, not too far. Uh, and then the one thing that's to look forward to that's kind of exciting is that there's going to be some limited time modes and rewards for Halloween, and Ooh, yeah. I think there's going to be a nighttime mode as well, which could be a interesting time i would say um but how's everyone feeling what's everyone thinking I so to far C4s, dude. <laughs> did we really oh, yeah need... i forgot about that they did a oh yeah the c4 nerves you yeah, can hilarious. barely <laughs> throw <toss>. it yeah <laughs> it's so funny yeah it's really really funny <laughs> every like, time you me... go and throw it's like <laughs> yeah for me with the subway it's like did we need this you know what i mean Is yeah there, did did was anybody calling for a fast travel system around Verdansk was was this something that people wanted uh, cuz uh, like I'm legitimately asking the question did you, I don't did, think so what mm. before season 6 did any of y'all see a person saying man Verdansk is so big I'd really love a system to you know fast travel why there's vehicles you can just get yeah. in like I it's silly. The use and, cases is going to be very minimal, I think, is what yeah, it really comes yeah, down to. Yeah, like Maddox said, like we used it once, and uh, we'll we'll never use it again. We all laughed basically. because it, <laughs> there's no point to it. What, like, you don't know where you're going. You don't, like, you have no idea where it's going to put you. That's that's problem number one. Problem number two is like, yeah, it just like you get in, the screen goes black, the screen lights up, and you're somewhere else. So, what is the point of this? Like that's that's kind of where I stand on it, and for me, especially coming off of season five, where the changes were, we're gonna open up stadium, we're gonna open up train station, we'll and those train. are right, and we're gonna put the train on the map. Like those are two big changes, two or three big changes, and now there's just like this fast travel system that's silly and and gimmicky and of no use. So it's kind of a weak showing. Um, haven't used the new guns yet, so can't speak on those. But I think as a sort of a, hey, this is the last season before Cold War. I think it's it's pretty weak. Yeah, it's interesting um, they, they did this <laughs> for this one. Yeah, time. I mean, I was expecting the subway to be like, oh, we just ride it, and it would be like, oh, we have a little break, we can start our own, uh, you know, in-game talk show mm-hmm. called talkway around verdansk subway talk (laughs) subway talk with gary witta and um but yeah it's kind of weird kevin any other thoughts on the weird subwayness you know i wish we actually rode the subway and like i don't know how big the subway is how many carts it has but i wish Mm -hmm. other people can hop on and like if one team's on the other side of the subway, and the other team, and then there's another team on the other end. 
like you see the doors open and close, you know, and then you can have a little fight in there trying to like see who can get to the other team quicker or you could just not kill each other or whatever. I don't know. I just want something I wanted to fight in the subway. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been cool. Sure. Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Like how cool would it have been to be in a subway, you're going one way, the other team's coming at you the other way in a train and you're shooting at each other as you pass by. Like Oh even that too, yeah. That would have been even more I don't know, something like that. But also like if if you can do that, don't have the tunnels open i don't know because i feel like people can like abuse that and stay in the tunnels if the circle comes around like under a tunnel or something like that like i feel like the tunnel should close when the train leaves the train st- oh the subway leaves the, the station and then you can mm-hmm. only be in the spot where you wait for it but it, then again they they did it their way right now and so where you just have to like wait for it i don't know I think- yeah honestly like thinking about the train system the train and the subway it would be nice if like there was like a six car subway style train or like amtrak train going around at like a little bit faster of a clip than the one that currently goes around and then you could have easily have battles and be like shooting out of the uh train as it goes along and instead of like the train that exists now you like hop on and you're just like out in the open there's no nothing to defend you yeah i think like for me as far as the subway is concerned as it is now no seasoned warzone player is gonna use this or rely on this in any there's just it's there's no point to it any anybody who's played this game as much as we have or maybe even less like you you see this this thing and you use it once and you ask yourself why would i ever do that again like I've okay, I've seen it. I've seen what it does. Why would I? What is the purpose of this in in terms of mm-hmm. winning the game? Uh, so it yeah, like I said, just for me, it's disappointing that this is the last season before Cold War, where there could be like this major shakeup, and this is what they bring out. And so, uh, what we haven't talked about though is the Armored Royale, and I don't know if y'all hmm. want to get into that. Yeah, does we can Mike, get into it. Does Mike want to say anything about the subway? Like, are you there? Oh, you know, Kevin, the subway. Oh man, not so much hype about it. Oh, geez. oh Kevin, you man. you were always so hype about good. it, Kevin. <laughs> I will totally agree with everything that Washburn just good. said about the subway. It is an absolute joke and a dumb idea. And if I was the team saying goodbye to war zone as we tr- transition into this new cold zone war zone, I would be so upset that this is how we say goodbye as a dumb fast travel system that didn't add anything awesome into the mix. That's all I have on the subway. Yeah. We uh, did already get a win in season six though. Shout out we, to that. We do have a win. <laughs> um I'm no, but let's talk about Armored Royale because this yes. is this, this is the good thing. So yeah. like where the subway is disappointing, Armored Royale is dope. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know how y'all felt about it. I loved it was it. chaos. I, and I, I, I thought it, it yeah. was super cool. Everybody drops in with this crazy armored truck on the back of it are these panels where you can use your money to upgrade it, put more armor on it, make it shoot better. Um, things like that. And just the chaos of that and how fun that is, is, is crazy. I, I think this is the really, really cool thing that they added. And I hope it sticks around because what I'm seeing from this is them saying, Okay, we're not we're not afraid to take risks and put put an idea in here that it is very different. Um, it's not just a big armored suit. We're giving every single team this big armored truck. We're gonna allow them to drive it around the map, upgrade it, and get into these big sort of twisted metal type battles with each other. I think it's super cool. I don't know where you guys stand on it. Yeah, it was awesome. I had a great time. I thought it was hilarious. Mike and I were the uh, people just sitting in the back of the truck. Mike had a riot shield, which was the smartest <laughs> move that he could have made. Because I'm like out there just trying to shoot, a, and then he's trying to deflect all the bullets in front of me. Um, I, I don't know. Was Washburn on the gunner seat? I was driving. I was you were driving. Seat. Kevin was on the gunner seat. And yeah, like it was a great time and we've like ran into another truck the other truck explodes like it's crazy <laughs> yeah yeah it's wild and you can call your uh truck back in mm-hmm. you can give it all sorts of upgrades um 
and uh yeah like i had a really good time i tell you that gunner seat it's not really meant it's kill. hard yeah it's not meant to kill anyone it's just yeah. meant to take out other uh trucks from what i noticed oh yeah <laughs> that I, makes sense i took down a couple people but it was yeah it was kind of tough yeah because it's not like the war it's not like the warthog yeah where when you get in the gunner seat you go in a third person you know yeah you're mm-hmm. in first person on this thing and so like when the truck is going over bumps and moving around like you're moving around with it yeah and it's, it's man tough. it is hard to aim that thing but like dude this this is a fun mode and i think they should take more risks like this because this is something i do want to like i do want to try again i think it's a whole lot of fun it's goofy i'm not sweating you know what i mean uh yeah. so so i i think this is a really cool addition here mike what'd you think oh, oh guys. guys you know i'm here I'm yeah here. Uh, I totally agree with both of you guys, and I really agree with Matt or with Washburn here. Of like, they should double down and experiment more with this. My only downfall was is me and Maddox were stuck in the back of the truck, and now sure, when you and your friends play, you're gonna have everybody rotating and stuff. But like, the back of the truck is just a deathbed, so they have to find <laughs> a way to make it more fun for me and Maddox. Like he said, like if I didn't grab that riot shield, guess what was gonna happen? There was gonna be a turret in our face, you know. So <laughs> I'd like to see. How do you elevate the other two guys' positions in the truck, and how do they make it more fun for us? Because we were just in the back for the ride, essentially. There was no choosing anything here, but can it's you, awesome. Can you throw down the deployable cover in, uh, the back, in the back of the truck? Maybe? You can't do that in the regular truck, but I don't know if they let you do this. Do that in that truck. Yeah, it would so... be... Ahead, interesting to see if they like you know how those there's all those like if you go back to battlefield or whatever those there's trucks that have like the little window slits mm-hmm. in it and like the back is covered but you're like I, still in there i was thinking so, the exact like, same thing like, medoc yeah that would be cool give a little like a hole for these guys can shoot through so they have some or cover. at least a little bit more protected yeah yeah i think it would be fun to just run a night of this or at least four matches and and rotate who's doing what you know what i mean mm. we go into the match okay mike's gonna be the driver next match okay kevin's gonna be the driver it, this guy's gonna be on the turret you know just sort of go through that rotation um i think it there we there's a lot of fun to be had here is it still up there Madoc? uh i think so um my guess is if it gets removed it will be removed on like a tuesday or wednesday but who knows maybe yeah. they'll keep it for two two weeks instead of one since it's the beginning of the season it's fine. And I also noticed it's double XP everything this week. Oh, yeah. I didn't notice it until I hopped it on, is... I think, last night, which was throwing me off. I was like, oh, man, I should be ranking up. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I was doing today. Um, I guess that's kind of all we have. Uh, they added some new maps to the regular multiplayer, uh, including the TV station. And the TV station is a terrible multiplayer map in case anyone was wondering. Yeah, that doesn't sound fun. It's like next level bad. Um, It's worse they... than the Superstore because there's there's a roof. Yeah. And if you have an airstrike, you can't really do much if everyone's in this TV station. Yeah. Wasn't there? Is it? It's So it's not a remake of like the old. There is because there is an old like radio or TV oh, station. Broadcast. One. Called. Yeah, broadcast. It's, it's called broadcast. broadcast as the multiplayer map, but it is the multi. It's, it's the it's the war zone TV station. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's kind of it's pretty terrible. <laughs> it's weird. Um, and then they also added a, a level called Tank Factory, and that one's actually really good. It's interesting because instead of you know how usually when you play domination, it's like there's one right in front of you. This one. It's like teams are starting on opposite sides, and then there's three across the middle instead, which I thought was a good change and an interesting one. I'll try that out. Yeah, Um, but there's a good chance that if you do the mosh pit thing, it will be broadcast a lot. And Honestly, I was just getting a bad rotation of maps today, and it was making me sad. (laughs) But I also did get one hard point shipment game in, and I leveled up my gun like five levels, you know? Wow. Damn, so, I wish I had that. There's that. <laughs> Once every 30 games or so, you can probably get one of those. Um, <laughs> next guy, next week, I think we're going to talk a little bit about Fall Guys Season 2, and who knows what else. Oh, oh man. Um, but, what do, do we have any predictions? Like, I don't on, know. On what, Fall Guys? Yeah. Fine, that's what I predict. 
<laughs> fun and What'd mayhem. Fun oh, and mayhem yeah. for fun and mayhem. Team. Yeah. The little clip of the new level that they added looked pretty cool. The so yeah, the sure. one. Yeah. I know, Medic. Me and you were talking earlier. Yeah. Like, is this gonna be twenty new maps, or are they? Because like, I I don't think it is. Because like five, right, or six? So is that have they confirmed that? Is it gonna be? a full round of season two maps or is it going to be a full round of season one maps and maybe you get one of the five or six new maps maybe you don't like do we know how this is going to work i don't I, think so i, thought it was I like... do think that they were going to like update what they looked like to kind of match what the season theme mm. was okay but i don't know other than that yeah um, i'm excited I'm, for it yeah I'm I'm on your page where it's like probably gonna be like four or five things, and then like the end. Like I would like a couple more different ending round things, but I feel like Hex Gone and Jump Showdown and all those will still be there at the yeah. end. Well, I think if down. yeah, my my big wish is that like we get two more final round variants, yeah. like totally new maps. And delete tail, tail tag. tag is gone, and jinx <laughs> is gone. Tail tag and jinx gotta go. They just gotta go. They they, they, they don't work. Match. It's they're Imagine super frustrating. Also kind of boring. Yeah, I'd rather they get rid of tail tag and jinx before that. But true, true. that's just me. I've been dying a lot and that's my match, wish. So I'm either I think that can go either way. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll talk about that and whatever else we play this week. Uh, thank you all for listening to this lovely show. He's been Washburn, he's been Kevin, he's been Snowbike Mike, he's been here most of the time. He turned into a robot for a little while. I don't know if he's aware of that, but we, he turned into a pretty hardcore r- robot for a little while. Can we get an and, update on Mike and see what it got at Spirit Halloween? Yeah, Mike, that's a good question. Hey, Mike, Spirit Halloween update? what have you purchased at Spirit Halloween yes. this afternoon? Are you are you ready to take a look? Let me see if I'm in a good enough spot to show it show it off. Okay, let's do it. You back in your house then? Yeah, yes. Yeah. How do I switch the camera around? He brought a broom at Spirit Halloween. Whoa. I don't think you do, bro. Hey, what up, everybody? It's your boy Snow Mike Mike coming in live <laughs> with some Spirit Halloween polls. Got the basics right here, but most of all, the coolest thing I got was this, y'all. Uh... Yeah, that's right. Life size Fortnite T Max head grabber. Why? <laughs> that's incredible. I'm not going to lie. What about the fat Batman? What is that at? That's, yeah, that, show us the fat Batman. Yeah, show us fat oh, Batman. Oh, fat Batman. But fat Batman. I do think that would be a great addition to his background. Let's be honest. <laughs> Which one? The dino had or fat Batman? The dino had it, for one. sure. I bought fat Batman because his because he looked like this. Oh, <laughs> That's actually incredible. He's got like a little tubby. A little tubby. Was Always he... remember, folks, it's not the suit that makes the man. It's the man that makes the suit. Fat Batman said that. <laughs> was this behind the glass case thing? That was behind the glass case thing, yes, Kevin. Really? Huh. I thought it would have been something you just grab off the, like, the rack or something. <laughs> Fat Batman doesn't look as good as I thought he was. <laughs> I just want to know if I can get a, a set of collectibles that's like Fat Batman, Fat Flash, Fat Wonder Woman, Fat. <laughs> Call them up, tell them to start making that shit right away. <laughs> oh God, can't wait! Can't wait to see more. Until next time. Calms, Calms out. out. <laughs>